first date You packed the water Cause I couldn't carry the weight And into the ashes You carved out a heart with our names I can still picture your smile And this night I had Shirley racking and I told her I was going to be working on my break all night and I explained, you know, that the down part about doing that is all that, you know, you got to gather up the balls and any pockets are all over the table and rack them over and over and over again. So she volunteered to do it for me. And, you know, it, it, it takes a little while to get used to these uh, template things if you never used one. Um, and then it just becomes second nature. So it took about a half hour, 45 minutes for her to, you know... Within, within an hour, an hour and a half, she was doing it as fast as the rest of us do it. And by the end of the night, she was, she was a master wrecker. So, uh, she likes doing it. Uh, it makes her feel a part of the, you know, what's going on. And it keeps her from, you know, getting bored. Um, so, yeah. Um, and then she came back the next night and started wrecking again. So, it's, it's been a big help to me. And it will be to anyone who's working on their break. Uh... I've paid, you know, kids and stuff 10 bucks an hour to do it for me, and they're always happy to do it. Um, and now I have Shirley, the wreck lady. Second night, I taught Shirley a little bit about pattern racking, and I'm publishing this video really very reluctantly because um, I've wanted to cover the subject before, but although I think most of my subscribers are honest people. Call them my friends, and I know most of them, but I don't know, you know, I mean, I have no control over who's watching this video, 
and so a percentage of the people watching are going to be educated on how to pattern rig and they're going to use it to their advantage and it's a form of cheating but the reason I decided to publish it is so the people who follow my channel and are subscribed know what to look for um, to keep other players from cheating. <coughs> and today in most tournaments it's rack your own. And you can pattern rack against somebody or you can pattern rack to give yourself an advantage. So it doesn't really matter if it's, you know, loser racks or, you know, it, it doesn't matter. Um, you can pattern rack against your opponent or you can pattern rack in favor of your sub. So, when your opponent is the one racking the balls, and this is such a, a touchy issue here. You should know what to be looking for. The problem is... Players don't often recognize what's going on until they're already losing three or four games. And and their opponent is just running out. You know, every game and, and just has a gravy table. Um, because he's pattern racket. So now you're stuck four games before you recognize them. Now, I don't recommend running up to the tournament director and, and you know, causing a scene. It's, it's not the way to handle this. The way to handle this, and I have run across it, is just to have a talk with your opponent saying that you, you know, you see what he's doing and and just cut it out that you don't want to go up to to whoever's directing the tournament and snitch on them and and that you understand that this is pool and then i don't you know i don't care how honest you think a pool player is when they're playing for their next meal they're gonna find advantages they're going to find ways to give themselves the advantage. And if that includes pattern racking, um, they're going to do it. They're going to, but the pros do it. Um, of course, it's hard to get away with in, in the pro arena because everyone's hip to this, but amateur players aren't hip to it. Um, so they really don't know what to look for. So I'm going to show you one, one pattern rack. There's several ways to pattern rack. But while making a point to Shirley and, you know, <laughs> having her eyes on my opponents um, and how they're racking and, and um, is, is good because it, 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 you know, results in somebody watching my back and to where I don't have to be conscious of every single thing. And she'll come up to me now because she's been educated on this issue. Um, and say, John, I think he's pattern racking. Look where, the, look where this ball is or that ball is on the rack. And he puts it there every time. And, and it goes here. Yeah, so she's hip to what's going on now. So, um, And I see it as a good thing. Um, I don't pattern rack. I, I don't. I could... Um, but I don't. I'm not playing for my next meal. Um, I take it or leave it. I don't do it to my opponent or to give myself an advantage. I just throw the balls randomly wherever the hell they are into the rack. Um, and I think that's what most people do, but the, the higher level players in your hometown, the short stops and all, you, you gotta watch them, man. And you gotta be hip to this. So, uh, let's go ahead and continue with the video here. 
the hardest part about eight ball is in finishing the rack. It's easy to get started in eight ball. You have a million options, but as you get down and closer to the eight ball, your options get severely reduced and, and your margin of error gets smaller to the point where there's only one way to get from the key ball to the eight ball. And this is why you have so many players out there that can't twist a knife and can't get through a rack of eight ball. So there they are getting bad on the key ball or getting bad on the eight ball and getting desperate and trying to shoot crazy stuff. When all they've done is a great big favor to their opponent and they've, they've cleared all the balls out of his way and he just gets up and, and runs a rack like it's nothing. Because it is nothing. He's, he's got no obstacles in his way. You've taken care of that. So there's a point in, in your progress with your pool game that you actually lose more games than you win because you're doing your opponents a great big favor. Now, it's the opposite with 9-ball. The hardest part about 9-ball is just getting started. It's, it's easy to finish a rack. If you can get through the 1, the 2, and up to the 4, you should be out. Because the further you go into 9-ball, the less obstacles you have in your way, and the more you can be perfect on finishing the rack. So your margin of error increases. And here we have the biggest dilemma of, of a nine ball player is just getting started. Being able to control the break and not only having a guaranteed shot on the one, but some players have learned to have a guaranteed shot on the two and the three and further and all through the rack if they're really good at racking the balls, which we call pattern racking. In a recent video titled Dissecting the Break, uh, the Money for Nothing video, I'm working on my version of the cut break, and we determine, as we do with the power break, that the one ball is hidden up by the top right hand corner pocket. So when I'm breaking, I'm cutting the cue ball to the left hand side route and spinning it up toward the top right hand route. And this way, I have a clear shot on the one ball. Now your problem with this is the back ball, which in this case is seven ball, is bouncing off the bottom round a little bit on an angle to bounce up table and to park itself near the top left hand corner pocket. And in this ball, which in this case is the three balls bouncing off the right hand round and heading up toward the left hand side pocket. So your agenda is to beat those two balls to the right hand side of the table before they run into the cue ball and they ruin your goal of having a shot on the one ball. So on this particular day, and as I was making this video, I'm totally focused on getting to the rail and beating those two balls to the other rail to the right-hand side rail before they can collide with the cue ball. And I believe I've mastered that. But it has taken hours and hours and hours of working on it. So now that that's down and I don't have to worry about that anymore, what if we make this ball in the back the three ball and we make this ball the two ball? And this is going to be the result. And now we have a shot on the one which is up table and we have a shot on the two which is up table and we have a shot on the three which is up table. Now it's an easy clean start to the game of nine ball and as we said this is the hardest part about nine. And now we should be stringing racks together. So Shirley is instructed while while we're going about this to put the two ball here and to put the three ball here. As with everybody the one ball is up front and the nine ball is in the middle. And I'm explaining to Shirley that this is against the rules of nine ball. You cannot do this. If you get caught doing this you're going to be kicked out of whatever tournament you're playing. But it's very 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 often done in gambling matches and the more money involved the more it's done. So you have to be aware of this if you're going to be a pool player. Dancing through silent sound. They drown.